Hey guys, welcome back again to another Tech Guru video. Today we are in Adobe Photoshop and I will be showing you five easy photo effects for beginners. So these easy photo effects will really impress your friends and family and it's a great arsenal to have within your Photoshop skills to be able to play around with these effects. So the first one that we're going to work on is a high contrast boost. So all you'll need to do is load your picture up within Photoshop. Go ahead and apply a layer adjustment which will be done right down here and it will be a black and white layer adjustment. Click on that there. The image will then turn black and white. Now select the black and white adjustment layer there and change the blend mode to soft light. Go all the way down to soft light. That will bring the color back. And then what you'll want to do is look at your adjustments. If you do not see that window or panel open to you, go up to window and then down to adjustments and make sure you have a check mark by it there. Now, the really cool thing about these adjustments is if you click on this button right here, it will allow you to click and drag on a specific part of the image and actually change that, okay? So I'm going to click on that button now, and if I want the sky to be different all throughout the photo, I will click and hold and I will drag, and as you see, the sky is getting darker, and if I go this way, it's getting even darker. So I can do that by just adjusting this panel and then if I want the trees to be changed I will click and hold and I can actually add a nice different effect to my trees and then the same thing for the grass I can lighten it up or I can darken it okay and by doing this it allows you to really add some contrast to your image within specific portions of your image so this is the final effect here and you can play around with that and achieve all kinds of neat stuff within that uh, photo effect. The next one that we're going to work on is going to be a high contrast outdoor photo effect. Okay, What you want to do is right click on your layer which is right up here or control click and then go uh, what you'll want to do is you'll want to go to unlock that layer and then click on OK and then you'll want to go ahead and right click on that layer and go to blending options. Once you are under the blending options here you will then go over to color overlay okay uh, change the blend mode of this to exclusion which will be down here at the bottom change that to exclusion uh, once you do that you'll want to change the opacity to around 25 percent which is right about there uh, even if you're not exactly on it that is okay uh, and then change the color to any color that you like so I'm going to change it to a nice light blue color which will be let's try that little light blue color right there click OK and then click OK on that and that'll add Add some nice contrasting to your photo. Now, again, you can play around with this, add all different types of colors and effects and play around with the opacity, and you can really get some neat effects with outdoor photos. Now, the next one that I'm going to work on is a dreamy photo look. Uh, the first thing that you're going to want to do is control or right click on your layer and convert that layer to a smart object. By doing this it will allow you to go back in and adjust all of the adjustments you make on this photo to your liking. The first thing we're going to want to do is go up to filter which is right up here in your toolbar. Go to filter and then go down to blur and then you will see a Gaussian blur here at the middle of the panel. Click on that and once you've done that you then can actually go up on the pixel so I would normally I would take it to around I don't know say 25 there okay and once you've done that click on OK and then what you're going to do is change the blending mode of this okay you want to change that blending mode to screen okay of your uh, your panel there. Uh, so what you're going to want to do is under your glossy and blur there, you'll want to click on that and make sure that it's set to whatever the pixels are that you want to change that to. And then you're going to want to go ahead and change that blending mode over to screen, like I had al have already said, and then change the opacity of that uh, down to, uh, let's say you want to change that uh, right about uh, 50%, which will be right about there okay and then once you do that you can go back in under your blur there and you can actually uh, play around with your blur there and click OK and then go ahead and up the opacity back to what it needs to be uh, so I would say right around 70 or 80 percent once you do that you can see there it's blurred out just a little bit so what we're gonna wanna do is click on our 
Gaussian blur one more time and kind of take it down just a little bit more. And then as you can see there, it adds a nice blur dreamy effect to your photo. Again, you'll want to play around with that Gaussian blur and then depending on your opacity, uh, make sure you apply that screen blending mode uh, on your layer there and that will work wonders to add a dreamy effect to your photos. The next one that we're going to work on is a nice antique uh, look to your photos. It's kind of a half sepia effect. So what we're going to want to do is apply a hue and saturation a saturation adjustment layer. Okay. Once you have done that, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to choose the sepia um, default here or preset. So if you click on your hue saturation adjustments here, click on the default down arrow and go to sepia. Once you've changed it over to sepia, what you want to do next is change your hue to 25 and leave your saturation to 25 as well. Uh, and then what you're going to want to do once you've done all of this in here is you're going to want to click on the hue and saturation make sure you've set it to the way you want it and then just leave it there and that will give you somewhat of an antique photo uh, look within your photos. Now you can play around with this, play with your opacity, and it will give you a nice looking antique photo look. Now the last one we're going to work with is I call it a low mo or a low color adjustment. So what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to add a levels adjustment layer. So click on your adjustment layers panel here, go to levels. Once you see the adjustments for your levels panel, what you're going to want to do is drag your black towards the middle, so say right there, and then drag your white to the middle until you got a nice centered look right there. Once you've done that, you want to now convert your background layer to a smart ob object. So go ahead and right click on your background or image layer, convert that to a smart object. Now what we're going to want to do is apply a filter. So go up to filter. Once we are there, we want to go to lens correction, which is right here. Once we have done that, okay, that will take a little while to load because it's got to apply that effect. We're going to apply a vignette, okay? Uh, that will add a nice little effect on top of this high color contrast that we're adding to our photo. So give it a few seconds to load. Uh, it'll say update lens profiles, database, whatever it may be. So let that load. It may take about anywhere from 5 to 15 seconds to load that effect depending on the size of your image. So it's almost done now. And once we're there, what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to go over here and look at what we've got, okay, which is over here. Go to our custom panel, which is right here, and then change the vignette amount, which is right here, all the way down to negative 100. Once you've done that, click OK. Now that will apply a nice little vignette around your photo. Also, by applying that levels adjustment, it'll really bring out the colors within your image. And if you see you have some colors that are coming out too much, you can always go back in your layers adjustment layer and take down those colors. See there's a little red here that you might want to take down so you can go back in and adjust that as well. So guys, this is five easy photo effects for beginners. If you have any questions about any of these effects, put them in the comment box below. If this video helped you out, go ahead and hit the thumbs up button below. That really does help me out. And if you want more Photoshop and other design tutorials, go ahead and click the subscribe button in the top left-hand corner, and I will be more than happy to provide more content for you. Thank you so much for watching my videos, and I will see you guys next time.